Pokemon games hide easter eggs and references in just about every nook and cranny that they can, and that includes the teams of various Pokemon trainers that we have seen over the years. Many trainers actually have some pretty cool hidden references within their teams, and that is what we are checking out in today's video. So let's get to it. Let's begin with a more recent game and an older region. In Pokemon Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee, there were actually a few easter eggs and references hidden within the teams of multiple trainers. My personal favorite reference lies within Blue's team, as when you battle him in rematches at the Viridian Gym, he has a Tauros, Alakazam, Gyarados, Executor, Aerodactyl, and Charizard, who can Mega Evolve into Mega Charizard Y. There are actually two references in this team, the first having to do with Charizard as Blue's ace, as this is the starter Pokemon that Blue is seen having in a couple of pieces of Gen 1 artwork, and it's also who he has as a starter in the manga. Furthermore, the rest of Blue's team is also most likely a reference to the team of his grandpa, Professor Oak, in the infamous scrapped battle with him that can be found in the data of the Gen 1 games. This is because four of Oak's five Pokemon can be seen on Blue's Let's Go team including Charizard, who Oak will use if Charmander was the leftover starter Pokemon, as well as Tauros, Gyarados, and Executor. It definitely sucks that this battle was scrapped all those years ago, but it's awesome that Oak's team was referenced with his grandson all these years later. Another trainer whose team contains a reference in Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee is Red. You can battle Red in Let's Go after defeating six Master Trainers in the post-game, and his team consists of Pikachu, Machamp, Arcanine, Lapras, Snorlax, and Venusaur. Since we are pretty used to Red having all of the starters and then usually just Snorlax and Lapras, his Let's Go team might seem a bit odd, but it's actually most likely a nod to his manga team. In the Pokemon Adventures manga, Red also had a Pikachu, a Snorlax, and even a Machamp briefly, with his main starter also being a Venusaur. The Venusaur, just like Blue's Charizard, also lines up with some Gen 1 artwork where Red is seen with a Bulbasaur, which also sort of makes this a callback to that as well. Let's go ahead and step away from Let's Go now, because there are plenty of other team references in other games as well. For example, the Hoenn champion, Stephen Stone, is known for specializing in Steel types. Despite this, however, he has multiple non-Steel types on his team, including Claydol, Cradley, Armaldo, and in Pokemon Black and White 2 at the World Tournament, Excadrill and Archeops. These feel like an awful lot of non-steel types for a guy who specializes in the steel type, but they are also a clever reference to his character, as all of these non-steel types are Pokemon who would have to be excavated from the ground in some way, and Steven, as a lover of stones, is known to do his fair share of excavating. This includes, obviously, all the fossil Pokémon, as well as Claydol being an ancient Pokémon that is said to have been made by an ancient civilization, and even Excadrill, who obviously does the excavating itself. While sometimes it's kinda weird when trainers don't follow the type that they're supposed to be, they usually have a fun reason for doing so, and this one, in my opinion, is pretty neat. Speaking of type specialists, let's do another quick one. I've covered this one before, so I'll be brief, but when talking about easter eggs in Pokemon teams, I couldn't not mention Flint. For being a fire type specialist, his team in Diamond and Pearl is all over the place, only having two fire types out of five total Pokemon. 
However, the reasoning for the Pokemon he has isn't random, because as the Fire-type specialist that Flint is, they all actually have to do with being hot. For example, Drifblim is a hot air balloon, and Lawpunny is a literal Playboy bunny, who are also, well, hot. Even Steelix has connections here, as Flint, the material, not the guy, and Steel are two materials commonly used in starting fires. So it's a fire reference and a pun at the same time. It's absolutely beautiful. Meanwhile, since we mentioned Black and White 2 earlier, let's go ahead and look at Getsis. In the original Black and White, Getsis' team has a very cool reference to his true intentions, as his signature Hydreigon has a moveset which has a super effective move for every one of N's Pokémon on his final team, foreshadowing that Getsis was simply using N all along and was prepared to overthrow him. Which is freaking cool. We've covered a few different generations so far, so let's bring yet another into the mix with Generation 2. Lance, in this generation, is champion of the Johto region, yet his team remains basically identical to his Gen 1 team, with the only differences being that his two Dragonairs have evolved into Dragon Knights, and he's also added a Charizard to his team as well. There are potentially two really cool references with this team. First is that the two Dragonairs becoming Dragonites, but Lance having the same team otherwise, could allude to the three years that have passed between Gens 1 and 2, which is pretty cool. But alternatively, these Dragonites could also be a reference to how Lance helped you stop Team Rocket at the Lake of Rage, where Team Rocket was broadcasting a radio signal to force Pokemon to evolve. This would also explain why these Dragonites are underleveled, and while I don't know for sure if this one was intentional or not, it is a really, really cool connection to the actual story of Gold and Silver, and that is good enough for me. Speaking of Gold and Silver, Red also, of course, makes an appearance in these games, just like he did in Let's Go, and his team here is more of what we expect from Red. But one thing I have always wondered personally is why does he have an Espeon in the original Gold, Silver, and Crystal? Well, that's because Red's entire team are based on the gift and event Pokémon that you can receive in Pokémon Yellow. Obviously, he was gifted Pikachu as a starter, and all of the other starters were obtainable as gifts as well. Additionally, you can also be gifted a Lapras at Sylphco, which he has in Heart Gold and Soul Silver. You of course have to encounter and wake up Snorlax as a sort of event Pokemon, and finally, Espeon comes from the Eevee that you receive as a gift in Celadon City. Also from Gen 1, meanwhile, is one that just recently occurred to me, and I think it's pretty cool. Given that Giovanni is obviously the boss of Team Rocket, his ground-type specialty could be due to him being the boss of an underground organization, who also quite literally operate underground underneath the Celadon Game Corner. I can't say for sure if that's what Game Freak was going for, but I mean, he's gotta be into ground types for some kind of reason, right? The next three we are going to cover here all come from the Alola games, and first we're going to start with How. In both sets of Alola games, How uses both a Pikachu and an Eevee on his team, which given that Let's Go Pikachu and Eevee were the very next games to release after Sun and Moon and the Ultra titles, seems a little too convenient to not possibly be a bit of foreshadowing at what was to come at the time. I mean, they literally wrote Let's Go right on the box art of Ultra Sun and Moon, so they were not shy about hinting at it. Another character that also has a neat theme to her team in Alola is Kahili. She's a member of the Elite Four who uses flying types, and the reason why she uses flying types is because she's a golfer. 
In golf, all of the different shots you can make are named after different birds, such as birdie, eagle, and albatross. Or maybe now that I think about it, she doesn't use flying types because she's a golfer, but maybe she's a golfer because Game Freak could make this connection. It's unclear which way that was supposed to go, but either way, it's cool. And finally, rounding out Alola, we also have Gladion. Gladion is a bit of an anti-hero, who starts out on the anti-side of things at the beginning of the game. However, his team is actually reflective of his character arc and growth as a person in the games, as three of his Pokémon, Silvalli, Lucario, and Crobat, all require high friendship in order to evolve, showing that Gladion isn't such a bad guy after all. This same sort of thing also happens with Silver from Gold and Silver, as he also has a Crobat on his final team to also show his personal growth as well. And there you have it. If you enjoyed the video, be sure to leave a like and let me know your thoughts in the comments below, or if there's any other team out there like this that I missed. With that said, Thank you all so much for watching, I really, really appreciate it, and I will be back with another video very soon. Until then, as always, I will smell you guys later.